Welcome to the next part of the module, which covers the Java Reentrant Lock class. This part provides a conceptual overview of mutual exclusion, explains how the Reentrant Lock class implements these concepts to provide mutual exclusion to concurrent Java programs, and shows how Reentrant Locks are applied in Android. Mutual exclusion is one of the most fundamental synchronization concepts, which defines a critical section where only one thread at a time can execute, as described at this link. A human known use of mutual exclusion is the protocol used in an airplane restroom, which is a critical section where only one person at a time should be. If the sign says vacant, one person can enter. When they lock the door, the sign then says occupied. As long as the restroom is occupied, other people must queue up outside and wait for their turn to enter. When the person in the restroom exits, they set the lock back to vacant, allowing a waiting person to enter. Note how this protocol is fully bracketed. In other words, the person who enters the restroom and locks the door must be the same person who unlocks the door and exits the restroom when they're done. Java provides mutual exclusion via its Reentrant Lock class, which implements the lock interface as described at this link. Most of its implementation is written in Java, as shown at this path name. Reentrant Lock uses the Gang of Four bridge pattern, described at this link, for several purposes. First, it inherits the bulk of its functionality from the Abstract Queued Synchronizer class, described at this link, which provides a framework for implementing blocking locks and synchronizers that rely on first in, first out, or FIFO wait queues. Second, it implements several lock acquisition models via its common interface. If the fair parameter passed to the Reentrant Lock constructor is true, then access is always granted to the longest waiting thread. However, if it's false, or if the default constructor is used, a lock does not guarantee any particular access order. The key methods in Reentrant Lock are lock, lock interruptibly, and unlock. Lock acquires a lock if it's available. Otherwise, it spins or blocks until the lock becomes available. Lock interruptibly acquires a lock unless the thread is interrupted in which case it throws an interrupted exception. Unlock attempts to release the lock if it's the holder. These methods simply forward to the fair or non-fair implementations selected in the Reentrant Lock constructors. The non-fair implementations of these methods are optimized to use faster mutual exclusion mechanisms, such as spin locks, as described in this link. To show how a Java Reentrant Lock is used in Android, we'll analyze a portion of the take method from the Array Blocking Queue class, which is a bounded blocking queue that stores its elements in first in, first out, or FIFO order, as described at this link. Array Blocking Queue extends Abstract Queue and implements Blocking Queue, as shown at this path name. We don't analyze every detail of this code, just the parts we need to explain how Reentrant Locks work. Array Blocking Queue uses a Reentrant Lock to protect against race conditions when threads can currently access its internal data members, such as the array of queued items, indices for the next take or put calls, and the number of elements in the queue. These data members need not be defined as volatile, since a Reentrant Lock implementation enforces the same memory synchronization semantics provided by built-in Java monitor locks, which ensure that reads and writes to data members by different threads are properly propagated through memory caches, as described at this link. Assume thread T1 calls take to remove the first element in a new instance of array blocking queue, which will block since the queue is empty. If another thread doesn't already hold the array blocking queue reentrant lock, thread T1 will acquire it, setting the lock's hold count to 1. The reentrant lock data member is copied into a final local variable which is an optimization idiom that produces the smallest byte codes, as described at this link. If thread T2 tries to acquire the lock held by T1, T2 becomes dormant until T1 calls unlock, which will decrement the hold count and release the lock when the count reaches zero. Unlock is typically called in a finally block to ensure the lock is released no matter how the method exits, as described at this link. After T1 releases a lock, T2 can acquire it and enter the critical section. We'll examine the broader aspects of synchronizing and scheduling array blocking queue methods in our upcoming video on Java condition objects, where we use both a reentrant lock and a pair of condition objects to implement the monitor object pattern, described at this link 
and covered in upcoming videos. In summary, a Java reentrant lock provides a lightweight mutual exclusion mechanism that defines a critical section where only one thread at a time can execute. It provides the same basic behavior and semantics as the implicit monitor lock accessed using Java's built-in synchronized methods and statements, but with extended capabilities, such as methods that perform non-blocking, interruptible, and timed lock acquisition operations. A reentrant lock must be used via a fully bracketed protocol since the thread that acquires the lock must be the one to release it. Another example of a fully bracketed protocol is documented by the scoped locking pattern described at this link. Likewise, the C++ resource acquisition is initialization idiom uses this protocol to ensure exception safety, as described at this link. A thread owning a reentrant lock can reacquire it without deadlocking since the underlying reentrant lock implementation simply increments its hold count in accordance with the recursive lock semantics described at this link. Although reentrant locks are a fundamental mutual exclusion mechanism, they can be tedious and error-prone to program due to the following common mistakes. Acquiring a lock and forgetting to release it. Releasing a lock that was never acquired. Holding a lock for a long time without needing it. And accessing a shared resource without acquiring a lock for it first or after releasing it. Java built-in monitor objects address some of these limitations, as we'll discuss later in this module. Rantrant lock is used throughout Android, particularly in its Java Util concurrent package implementation, as shown by the source code at this path name.